seahorses are just so extraordinary. They're so weird. Their they're, they're behavior, their looks, the way they act, um, just is incredibly appealing. I, I never get tired of being able to watch a seahorse and see it going about its, its daily business. Seahorses are a, a small, weird fish, but they're very iconic for many of the biggest marine conservation issues facing our worlds today. They live in the shallow seas, the coastal waters just so near to shore where we fish, where we play, where we swim. And these are the most diverse and threatened marine habitats on the planet. I've worked with seahorses for so long, I don't even really remember when their love affair began. But I'm besotted with them now. They're just such gorgeous animals, almost as if they come out of mythology. First of all, they have male pregnancy, so the female transfers eggs to the male's pouch, and they're fertilized there, so the father actually knows he's the father, a rare thing in the animal kingdom. And then he provides nutrition and oxygen, and throughout the pregnancy, he looks after these young, till eventually he goes into labor and releases them. Seahorses have been around for millions of years. They have almost no fins. They have just one fin that propels them and a couple to steer and maneuver them. They hold on to things with their tail, such that actually if you tickle their tail, they'll let go of that seagrass or that coral and hold on to you instead. I'm fond of saying they're the only fish that holds your hand. Project Seahorse undertakes a very wide range of activities, from fundamental biological research to understand more of these, about these extraordinary fishes, to establishing marine protected areas that are havens for them, but also so many other marine creatures, right up to working at, with governments on international policy that makes the really global trade in these animals much more sustainable. Project Seahorse coming here and all of the work that they've done that uh, uh, made me uh, curious about uh, the species. They have uh, some kind of mysticism uh, around them, uh, a face that looks like a, a horse and then a, another part of the, their body that mainly has nothing to do with the normal fish that we know. The Ria is quite big, it goes from Tavira which is the west part of the, the south coast of Portugal and goes up to Ancão, which is next, next to Praia de Faro. Seahorses are really uh, decreasing in numbers. Uh, that is a huge concern because um, they, they occupy um, a specific niche in, inside the Ria. We found a huge reduction in number. It was about 85% for Hippocampus gutulatus, which is a long snouted seahorse and uh, about 56% for the other species that occur here, uh, hippocampus, hippocampus. Habitat loss due to dredging, because the Ria has a huge human impact here. There are fisheries going on inside the Ria. They won't release the seahorses back to the wild, so they end up dying on the nets. So habitat loss is one of, in my opinion, the biggest uh, concerns here in the Ria. Seahorses are very special animals in their own right and highly threatened. But they're also symbols of a lot of major marine conservation problems in the world. They live in some of the world's most threatened habitats, seagrasses, mangroves, coral reefs, estuaries, kelp beds. They're also threatened by really indiscriminate fishing where you just take everything you encounter in a trawl net. And then too, of course, some of the most desperate people in the world turn to seahorses as a last ditch resource. When you put all this together, you can capture many of the world's most pressing marine conservation problems in tremendously charismatic animals that engage us all in trying to find solutions. Everybody can get involved in seahorse conservation. Whether you're keeping seahorses at home as pets and being very, very careful about which ones you choose to being equally careful about using them in medicine. Similarly, you can really be careful about your seafood choices, particularly avoiding shrimp, which is one of the most destructive fisheries for seahorses globally. Project Seahorse is completely dependent on external support 
to carry out our marine conservation work. And every bit, little bit really makes a huge difference to our small team. If we can get it right for seahorses, we can really get it right for most marine environments and the many, many species within them.